Welcome to Das Geek. I wanted to show you the NHD 15. This gigantic box came in the mail. Nearly had to get two people to help me lift. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration, but this gigantic cooling fan option here is, well, it's beloved by many builders and overclockers and just individuals wanting to keep their components cool. It is massive in size. In fact, it is 165 by 150 by 161 millimeters. You must have a giant case to fit this thing in there. Now they've done some unique things like cut up underneath the fins so that you could fit some higher profile RAM. The fans are movable, meaning you can have one higher than the other, which is pretty cool. And you don't have to use both 140 millimeter fans if you don't want to, but of course you're gonna get more cooling power if you do. The other thing that's really cool about this is it has six heat pipes in its dual tower design. So there is plenty of heat dissipation going on all around. And this works for Intel or AMD sockets, current sockets and future sockets and every socket in between, you should see the list. So you got the widened fin stack, you've got the heat pipes, you've got the high RAM compatibility, you've got the 140 millimeter fans. It's just a beast of a cooling solution. The greatest thing perhaps though, out of all of this, is it doesn't have any RGB anywhere. Thank goodness. So really I got this, I don't overclock my components. I've done plenty of water cooled designs in the past, but I just don't wanna play with water around my machine. Even in the all-in-one solutions out there, I just don't really wanna play with them anymore. I much prefer something that's a little more predictable, like a fan here, where the worst thing that happens if it breaks, I can just put a new fan in and I don't have liquid spewing all over my very expensive machine. Now, because I don't overclock, there isn't a whole lot of reasons to replace this, you may think, uh, over the stock fan that comes with the Ryzen 7 2700X. However, you're gonna see in some of the t die specific metrics that I pulled on this, that this keeps the component much, the CPU much, much more cool than the standard one that comes with the Ryzen 7. And as such, you can get expect better life and better performance out of your machines utilizing something that's a little more beastly than what you get. Although the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X stock cooler is a fantastic, the best stock cooler I've ever seen come out pre-packaged pre with a CPU before. So overall, the NHD 15, I enjoy it. You're gonna see some of the numbers that it drops there somewhere between, you know, depending on what's going on, a five degree to a 20 degree difference. And that's pretty extensive for a fan and keeping your machine cool. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Although if you do not have a giant case, you will not be. So here's a short view of me installing it and then we'll look at some of the benchmarks. So we're going to install the Noctua NHD15. This really isn't a tutorial, just really showing you kind of the steps you go through. We've got to undo the latch on the side here of the AMD stock cooler. And then of course we have to unlatch or get it to unlatch from the other side that doesn't have a lever making a complete pain in the butt, but eventually you'll find that right angle and get it off there, as well as unplug the cable from the fan to your motherboard. Next thing we need to do is get rid of all of that thermal paste on there. I'm pretty excited to put this in HD 15 in at this point. I'm going as fast as I humanly can so I can see these mad, mad temp drops that I'm hoping we'll get. Fortunately, the bracket that I have for this motherboard will work right out of the box, so I didn't need to change brackets but you do need to make sure that that bracket is in place because you need to put the mounting brackets for the NHD15. You can see they curve away from the CPU on next, and that's what you're gonna mount this massive thing to. So these go into the bracket on the back, and you're going to screw them just tight enough to where you get to the point of resistance and stop. Do not over tighten screws in this case. You will ruin everything. Everything will be destroyed. All right, so now we're gonna put our thermal paste on. I followed their instructions, did the dot. Normally I do the line, but hey, why not try something different? Seemed to work pretty well. You're just gonna put a little dab of that in the middle, and then we're gonna drop this giant fan in. The problem is that fan in the middle, which comes pre-mounted in the box, keeps me from getting to the screws. So I'm gonna to have to take that middle fan out, which you'll see here. And now that allows me to take these spring-loaded screws and get them placed properly. And now you mount your fans by basically taking 
the little metal pins and stretching them over the tower. As you can see here, and you get two of these fans to mount in this particular kit, two of these 140 millimeter fans. So next, let's take a look at some of our benchmark results that we got. This is with the AMD stock cooler. Look at the T die section. You can see about 98 degrees there is what we were doing and resting idle temperature. During a benchmark, you can see we get 116, 130, 125, 120. It does a pretty good job for a stock fan. One of the best stock fans I've ever used in keeping it down. But now you can see with the Noctua, we're at a T die of 92 degrees there. And once we start running benchmarks, it still keeps it well, well below what we were getting with the stock fan. So it's pretty awesome. So none of these tests were scientific, but it was fun to see some of the temperature changes. And what I'm gathering after using it for over a week now is between a five to 10 degree idle difference and a 15 to 20 degree difference under a heavy load, such as gaming or benchmarking. That's quite a feat for a CPU fan. Obviously, people love this fan. It is beloved by many PC builders out there. As soon as people heard I got one, I received tons of comments about that's my favorite fan. I put them in every machine. They're absolutely fantastic. With that said, it would be nice in the future if they could come up with some innovations to allow it to be a little smaller. But when you're getting into, you know, wanting to overclock or get the best performance out of your machine, definitely look at this line, the NHD15 or D14. Absolutely amazing. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Just not watch the video.